Okay, so now let's illustrate the linear regression model using a data set and procedurally we will uh, you know see how um, <clears throat> the idea of building a linear regression model would work so uh, this data set is a small data set and there is a yearly data of the uh, average uh, wine price that was produced in france so you see the year information there, the first column, then the price of the ever, uh, of the wine, how much of a winter rain happened, the average growth season temperature, this column here, the harvest rain, so how much of a rain happened during the harvest period, the age of the wine, and then the population of France in that year. So from the age, you can tell that... Um, you know, the year is basically the year the, the wine was, uh, I guess, harvested, I mean, you know, or, or produced, let's say, you know, made ready. And in 1952, if that's 1952, if the age of the wine is 31, if you add them up, you get 1983. So this data is from 1983, right? So let's start with a very base model. Now, what does this mean? What does base model mean? It means without using any information whatsoever, meaning you don't use any of these columns present in the data. So you don't use any of these columns here. You just have the price available to you because that's the output variable. We want to predict the price of the Y, right? So we have that available. So what's the simplest model? that can be if you only have that information well what you can do is you can take the average of the price and your model will always predict the average of the price that's it nothing more because you don't use any other columns there are any of the variables you know you can assume it's not collected yet so you just have the price of the wine so what's so these dots you see in this figure are the uh the, the price column there so the dots from the price column yeah right so the different years, how much, how much the wine was worth from those years. So the average is about 7.1 or so. That's here, this point. So I, I, I drew a horizontal line there. So your model will always predict 7.1. That's it. That's the meaning of the base model. Okay. The, the main idea here is that once we start adding more variables, we expect the, mo the, the model to get better. And as, as we expect the model to get better, we expect, right, to the the uh, the error to go down. So base model will act as basically the, the name gives gives it away base model, right? So we will be able to compare the new models to the base model and see how much of an improvement we are making by adding those variables. The larger the decrease in the error the better those variables are, right? Because they, they are giving large increase in the accuracy of the model. So the performance increases largely. That means that variable is an important one to use. Okay. So if you take one of the variables there, the AGST, earth growth, season temperature, seems to be an important one. Why? Because when I look at the scatter plot of price versus AGST, I can see an overall trend there, right? An increasing trend like this, something like this, or maybe a little bit more. This would be more appropriate, maybe. Nonetheless, you can see as the average growth season temperature increases, from the dots there, you know, going to the right, the price also increases, right? So there's a positive correlation here. So this plot on its own tells me, okay, there seems to be some positive relationship there. You know, I may be moderately uh, strong or so. So this, by adding this to my model, the AGST to my model, I expect the model's accuracy or the model's performance, right, to increase. That's my expectation. Okay. So going back to the base model, I want to calculate, by the way, the mean price, the exact mean price is 7.07. .07. You can see it from there. So now I, I, I want to, you know, introduce this concept of error. So what is error? Error means the difference between the actual data points, which are these black dots here.
all these black dots, you know, every one of them is the actual data points. And then my model, as we said, is always predicting the average price here, which is 7.07. .07. So then the difference between the actual price and the predicted price is going to be the error, right? The smaller the error, this, the, the um, smaller this, um, this, these bars will be. But the larger the error, the larger the bar will be. For example, in this point here, we are making a very large error there because the actual price is 8.5, while my model is predicting 7 you know let's let's just say seven seven dollars there this one is also quite large right you can see how much of a difference there is but these ones are quite small because they are quite close to the um to the actual uh i mean that line is quite close to the actual pr prices there okay so the sum of squared errors meaning you, you basically look at these the height of this or the length of this error right basically the difference so let's call that e and let's call that e1 for the first point so you take the square of that calculate so if this is e1 here you calculate the height of the second one the length of that error you square it and you go in this manner you calculate all these errors so if there is, I don't know, n data points, you have n squared there, right? So if you add this up, this is SSE, sum of squared errors. This is the definition of SSE. Okay, so that's equal to 10.15 from the base model. So when I add this AGST to my model, I expect my model error to go down so this SSE should go down let's see if that's the case and before ending up with the actual model there for AGST I want to like kind of randomly try different lines myself and see how much of an error I'm making okay now for example if I were to try this line at the very top there so that black line here this is my model now you can see I'm, you know, my model actually got worse. You can see all of the data points are making much large, you know, they have larger errors now because this line is really does not fit. They fit the data points very well, clearly. And my SSE has gone up to 41.19. So this apparently is, you know, the, the line I chose is basically not a good line. Let's try another one. So something in between would do much more sense. And indeed, if I tr draw this line, and I also show which what kind of slope uh, and intercept values I'm using. So in this case, B is the in, uh, intercept, M 0 0.5 is the slope. So this model is 0 0.5 times X plus B, which is 0. Okay. So uh, X in this case is AGST. So 0 0.5 times AGST value plus 0 is this model here. Okay. And the model... Minus one, right? Because b is minus one, so that's my model. Right? So the linear regression model is there. All right. So we got better now. Our SSE has gone down to six point eighty one. Good. Let's try to mix a little bit uh, difference in the inclination there. Zero point seven times AGST is the current model here, plus four point. Sorry, uh, that's minus four point five. Yeah, let's do it that way. A little more better there. And this model here, 6.85 M, that's the slope, so AGST, minus 3.418. So this is the model here. And my error is the smallest number. The other models is 5.73. Um, so actually, this line right now, so the others were kind of randomly, me trying different uh, slopes and values for the model. This one is the final model obtained by using the linear regression model, by building the linear regression model in R. Okay, so, so basically this is, you know, th this is the best the model can achieve. These values, by using these values, so these are the coefficients, by using these coefficients, this is the lowest error I can achieve, 5.73. Okay, sum of squared errors is 5.73, so it cannot go lower than this. If I make any small changes to these values here, let's just see, to these coefficients, 
then this error will again go up. Okay, so this is the best model I can fit. Okay, and these are called the coefficients, both of them. So this is also, uh, you know, this uh, generally um, is referred as beta zero, the, um, the intercept, and beta one is generally used for the other coefficients. So the first, because there's only one variable we're using here, which is AGST, we have only beta one. If we used other variables in our uh, data set, then, you know, that would be beta 2, beta 3, and so on. These are the coefficients. So this would be beta 0, and this would be beta 1. So how did I find those coefficients? So by using the LM function, LM function in R, um, you give the formula, so you say, I want to predict price by using AGST, and this is the tilde sign there in the middle. This one is this symbol. On your keyboard, that would be on top of the tab key in the upper left corner there. Right, that's the tilde sign. So you're saying basically, I want to predict price by using AGST. That's it. Um, and you also have to give the data for this. So meaning, what you know, what is data I'm using? I'm I, we are using the wine data. Uh, so I I, I stored the wine data set into the variable called wine. So this could be different in your case, whatever name you use to you, to store the variable, store the data set in. In my case, I used wine there. So that's that's why I give wine as, as input there. Okay. And then, uh, so that's that information, that model is stored in, uh, in the variable called model here. And then I use summary to get a summary of the model. Okay. And you can see these est uh, uh, under this estimate here, you can see those coefficients that we just found. So you see intercept and it says AGST. So that's the coefficient of the AGST variable. On the right, you can see this uh, p-value. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, right, from statistics, it's assumed, it's assumed to be uh, statistically significant, meaning it's, you know, you can, you can assume basically that variable is important to use it's adding uh, some good value to the model that's what you can assume there so the AGST indeed is expected as less than 0 0.05 p-value so it's statistically significant and it has also three stars here so you can see the definition of the stars there if it is um, you know between 0 0.1 and 1 it doesn't they don't put anything there if it is between 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 it's single dot 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 a single star and so on so three stars mean it's actually pretty significant there okay because it's actually less than 0 0.01 as you can see from this definition and so this is the blue line here on the left is how the uh, linear regression line would look like right and that's our model there so that's our prediction line so from this moment on i can make predictions with this model right the only thing I need is the input of AGST value, right? So if you say, hey, my AGST is 16, what's the prediction, what's the model's prediction for the wine price? Well, go up here. This is where it intersects. So what's the price of that? At that point, it's uh, 6.75 maybe, right? So that's going to be the prediction. So all the predictions are going to happen on this blue line here for the linear regression model. As long as you give me the input, as long as you give, not me, I mean the, uh, the model, as long as you give you the model, uh, the value of AGST, because what it does, it will basically take that AGST value, in this case 16, multiply it by its, multiply 16 with its coefficient, which is 0 0.6351, right? It's found by the model. So times AGST. So let me write the model here, minus 3.4178. So if it is 16, you put 16 here, you multiply by 0 0.6351, and then you subtract 3.4178 from there, from that value, and then you obtain the, uh, the result from there. Okay, I just kind of, uh, by looking at this line where it intersects, it looks, it, it will be a close value to 6.75 there. All right, so that's how the predictions are made. Now, um, so, uh, like if I go back here, so we calculated SSE, right? So for the actual data points you have, 
you can basically make predictions by using the model so every prediction on this model will be as i said will be lying on this linear regression line here and then the differences between them right all these differences are the errors so then you can calculate the error of your model right and that's what we did here so your final linear, uh, the final linear regression model, the performance can be assessed by that way. All right. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. As long as you have your data ready for that, uh, for the process, then you just use it this way, and then you can create a linear regression model very easily. The R squared calculation here that's important to look at. So this value that you see here. It says multiple R squared 0 0.435. Okay. So how's that calculated? Well, uh, remember we started with the base model, right? We said the base model, and uh, we, I mean, we base model was basically the average of the price of the Y, right? So the sum of squared errors in that model was 10.15. And then the sum of squared errors of this final linear regression model by using the AGST as input was 5.73. So what we do is we take the uh, error of the base model, 10.15, we minus 1.5.73 uh, from our fitted model, and then we divide it by the base model's SSE, which is 10.15. So this will give us 0 0.435, okay? So the, 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 uh, the base model's SSE is referred to as the SSE mean or the SSE T for the total sum of squares. The SSE fit is the basically SSE, you know, the uh, sum of squared errors from the fitted model. It can also be referred to as SSE model, SSE fit, or just sometimes SSE as well. Okay. So if you, basically R squared shows how good of a fit our model is to the data. So um, this, it will be between zero and one, right? So 0 0.435, you can assume 43% um, like a fit amount, let's say. Or in other terms, you can think of that 43 as 43% of the data, of the variance in the data was explained by the model, right? So, of course, from this you can understand that we, as we get closer to 1, the better the model is. As we get closer to 0, the worse the model is. Um, now, of course, there are always some fields, some areas that, you know, even 0 0.10, 0 0.20 or so would make people happy because of the nature of the data. And then there's some areas where, uh, I don't know, even 0 0.8 might not make you very happy. So, this, this value, oh, I mean, yes. Closer to one is always better, but again, you cannot expect to always get that good from your uh, from your models, right? Because the data itself might be very very hard to work with. So that's something to keep an eye on. So um, <clears throat> I mean, the reason I'm saying this is because once you build a model and you get the low R squared value, um, of course you can try more. You know, you can try to add more variables to increase information uh, that you provide to the model, but then there might be a limit to it because the data itself might not be that good in terms of explaining what you're trying to do so then you won't really achieve high r squared values okay so um, also when you look at this calculation uh, one final thing i want to point out is that um, so 10.15 is the error from the base model 5.73 is the error from the fitted model right basically 10.15 error means uh, Right, when you, when you make an error, you're basically not uh, able to explain that amount of data, right? So 10.15 um, error is made because, you know, the, the model could not understand the data good enough. And then 5.73 was made by the final model because, again, the, the model, although improved, was still not um, able to learn everything from the data. So the difference between them will be basically... Uh, how much did the model learn by adding the AGST variable compared to the base model? So the difference there, 10.15 minus 5.73, is the amount, uh, so that's less error being made because of the added information obtained from the AGST variable by adding the AGST to the, to the base model, right? So that's why we call this R squared 
how much of uh, the data was being explained by the model, like that 43.5% or 0.435 is the amount that was captured by the model by adding the AGST to the base model. Okay, it's a, it's a comparative measure there. Um, so on, on the right, I also wanted to point out this. So there is, you can see the adjusted R squared. It's basically, you will always see these two values. So multiple R squared is the base, uh, is the basic calculation, the, this formula for the R squared calculation. The adjusted R squared is a penalized version of this R squared because what it does is, as you add more variables, uh, the R squared will always increase, even that, even even if it is a small amount. So even that variable, if, if it is a very kind of useless variable, it, the R squared will still increase by a small amount. So the um, so um, basically this is not very good because if, if if you keep adding more and more variables, you will probably lead it will might lead it might lead to overfitting and other issues as well. So just having more variables is not always a good idea. Okay. So to account for that notion, um, a penalized version of uh, R squared is introduced, which is called adjusted R squared. So basically it subtracts from this amount uh, based on the number of variables you're using. Okay. So uh, that's why it's adjusted R squared is always less than the multiple R squared as shown here. Okay. Because as, as I said, it will subtract from the calculated R squared value like some uh, amount of penalty, which is based on the number of variables you're using. So the more variables you use, the more the penalty will be. Okay, so this, um, this is a better value to use when comparing different models, because it also accounts uh, for, for the number of variables you're using. Okay, well, that's it for linear regression. Thank you.